everybody welcome to another stream a short one tonight probably only about an hour um i have to try to finish this comic page if at all possible in the next hour and uh you may have been wondering if you caught the last stream harry how come you haven't finished yet i have been doing other things i've been a busy busy boy i'll talk about that in just a second let me just tweet out that I am streaming. Let everyone know I'm up to no good. Live and in person. Um, okay, so let me just make sure I'm situated here. Hello to Dylan Royer. Hello, Terranium. Hello, Nikolai. Hello, Elite Energy. And hello, Special Fish, Simon. So yeah, what are we doing today? I'm going to try to finish uh, this page, actually this double page spread, actually just this one panel. Uh, this is all I have to finish. Let me show you um, where I'm at. I was working on this page about four days ago on the last stream. The reason I'm not done yet is because I've been doing other things. I'll talk about that in just a second. So this is what we're going to be doing today. It's Kilgar and Hogstrong sat around the table with all the fish ladies sexy fish ladies everyone and um he's eating a big fish kilgar not one of my favorite drawings but it should hopefully be kind of a fun panel basically it's not done it needs a lot of rendering uh which i'm going to try and get through today it's one of my least favorite parts of the process we're trying to add the shading uh, i may have gone a little bit too thick and heavy with the shading on these two pages but uh, maybe I can kind of wind it in a little bit or maybe add a little bit more to the kind of adjoining pages so it, it smooths out. Anyway, let me show you the other uh, two sort of pages worth. So we've got this opening panel here of, uh, actually there's, there's an earthquake on the planet. So the Starbarians are, well, Hogstrong is wondering what's up with the earthquake. They're uh, scattering, you know, the local villages, the peasants are scattering. Kilgar is uh, peeling some dead guys off of his back. They get stuck to his back earlier. And there's a dead guy on the floor and it's causing a big drama and a big crisis. But anyway, uh, if we go down, let's see the next three panels. Um, Hogstrong basically says, you know, we're not going to leave. We want to help you guys. And uh, this character is Coralai. Coralai says, get out of here, take your ship and go. Hogstrong doubles down in this panel and says, no, I will not go. Um, he doesn't say it like that. He doesn't say, no, I will not go. He says something else like, we're not leaving. I'm not, you know, what, I'm not going to strand you, whatever, what, whatever fucking dialogue. I, I can't remember what he says. I think he just says, I'm not leaving. And she says something along the lines of then, you know, you can carry our dead and then you join them. Um, and the next two panels down here is we have... Uh, this is going to be all bluey. This is a nighttime scene. Every time, you know, I do a comic page on stream, I'm not going to show you all of the stuff in detail and just ruin the story. But I think it's kind of fun to give you some context here. Um, this is the sheriff and his uh, enforcers that night. They're watching the villagers do like a little funeral procession. So there's going to be nice kind of glowing torches, a sort of blue uh, moonlit type of sky. So it's a totally different time of day, maybe sort of four or five hours later. And the sheriff basically says, find them, uh, find the, uh, find the outsiders, uh, the people with the buxom starship. We must find them. Whatever, that kind of thing. Cut to um, a little shell. I actually added some, some points to the shell because uh, it looked like a dog turd and I thought how can I make it look more like a shell and less like a big poopy and uh, that's what we did added some uh, little points to the shell and it's this is at night time it's going to look all warm and cozy and glowing within and then we get up to this panel which is what we're going to be jamming on today which is uh, the Starbarians having a little bit of a feed and talking to the local women although Hogstrong is really doing the talking and then uh, basically you see there's uh, the baby is sleeping upstairs, now a fatherless baby because of what's happened. And Hogstrong says, what happened here? And she begins to tell him the story, which is gonna be the next couple of pages. And I won't give away anything related to that. So it's just the setup. Anyway, today on stream, I'm gonna be working on this uh, panel that I did not finish on the last stream. We started it and I've kind of done everything else since. That was about four days ago. I think the reason that I've not uh, finish this yet. They should have really really been inked in one or two days, but um, I've been working on animation. I keyframed about 25 seconds of the three character scene this week, which hopefully you'll get to see um, before too long. Uh, I'm kind of flipping back and forth between animation and comic at the moment. It's chaotic. It's mad. Anyway, gonna try and finish this bad boy today on the stream. Let me say hello to a few people who have dropped by. Hello, Sleep of the Sword. I said hello to Terranium. 
Hello, Nolvol. Hello, the Magma Muncher. Hello, Seb Crazy Tunes. Seb Crazy Tunes. Um, hello, Wholesome Time 777. Yeah. All right, guys. Let's get to it. So the basics of the shot are already done. All right. You know, there's not a whole lot that I need to, uh, to add. But uh, I'm going to kind of try and fill out the background just a little bit and sort of make it feel like a, a fishy abode. Um, I'm going to pick that number five brush. Actually, is there anything on this layer? Yeah, there is. Okay, let's add that to the layer below. So we've got like a fresh layer that I can just sort of tweak. And we're going to try to sort of imply some wooden boards up here. Bit of a boring kind of background that we have to do here. It's the inside of their shell house. I'm not boring. Not boring for uh, for me. It's it's stressful and tough for me, but for you guys it's probably boring. But um, I figure they live inside a big shell and there are kind of tiers and like an extra floor above them basically made out of driftwood. So it's going to imply... I really like uh, rotating the canvas in uh, Clip Studio Paint. Uh, just trying to try and kind of in gently imply that this is uh, wood up here. And uh, just do that with a bit of wood, wood grain. Part of me wants to kind of shade it because this is the underside. But uh, I figure that if we go over here, we're all upside down. But there's uh, the big cooking pot here, which is going to be um, flame, sort of like fire at the bottom. And there's the candlelight in the middle of the table here. So basically in this scene, all of the light is actually coming from, from underneath. And like I say, this is a very short stream today, guys. Probably only an hour. And we'll see if we can get this page finished. I'm actually... I'm not particularly optimistic I can get it done in an hour. But um, maybe I could if I wasn't streaming. <laughs> but I thought you'd appreciate seeing it. Seeing as we started it on stream, I thought I could finish it on stream. And um, I'm going to try and keep my head down and just work today. If you want to definitely get me a question that I read out, Please, uh, there's, the Super Chats are not turned on right now. If you can use the tip link in the description, I'll definitely read out any questions that I get through there. Otherwise, I'm going to be basically in, in focus mode, in crazy old focus mode, trying to make sure that I tackle this panel today. So let's reset that. I figure they basically have some kind of... Let's do like a little hook in there. I'm going to have some kind of... hammock type net I figure they're kind of a fish tribe so they're gonna have lots of fishing equipment laying around you know nets and stuff and just sort of imply you know kind of the webbing of the net here we'll actually add the um the buckets and sort of junk in the net in a little bit uh, Alrighty, do that in a little while. Oh boy, come on, come on. Oh, you just sometimes you cannot get the line the way you want it. Okay, okay, all right. So it's sort of uneven and crisscrossy, but I figure you know it's probably a, a very handmade net hanging up there. And we'll put some junk up there in a second. Hmm. I want Hogstrong's weapon laying around. Maybe it's going to have to be against the back of his chair there because I, I figure that he would keep it close to him and it wouldn't be by the door. So I'll make the door kind of over here and make it... It's inside a big shell, so I kind of want it very uneven. It's a bit uh, Flintstones. It's like fish Flintstones, if you get what I mean. And let me put that in there. Okay. So we're going to have a little kind of porthole here, a little hidey hole, um, or a lookout hole in the door. So this should look a bit wooden. A little bit more sort of hatching there at the bottom because the light is coming from above 
and I guess it'll be dark outside because this is a nighttime um, scene. And I'm just going to imply basically some ugly wooden boards here for the. Um, uh, they're going to need some kind of some kind of <laughs> door handle. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, a door handle that a fish would use. Uh, let's put a little starfish in there. That will be the doorknob. Okay, little lumpy starfish. That's a that's a fucking ratchet looking star there, Harry. Okay, all right, something along those lines. We see who's joined us in the chat. Hello, Giuseppe Stromba. Hey, Giuseppe. Hello, BJ Chester. Hey, it's Axma. Just Axma. Good to have a couple of Patreon supporters here. My uh, my financial benefactors coming by to crack the whip to make sure I'm hard at work. Hey, Aya! Good to see Aya. Uh, Aya's a fantastic animator and artist I've collaborated with. In fact, Aya, we should talk soon. We should talk soon about another collaboration if you're uh, at all available for it. All right, so we got a little, little SpongeBob door handle there uh, in the shape of a starfish. Let's add a little bit more to that, to that leg down there. And hey, we've got Shucharu as well. Shucharu is another fantastic animator. A lot of animators in the chat. This is, uh, this is basically like um, the Continental. You know, it's basically the hotel from John Wick, but for animators. Um, yeah, so... Okay, I'm going to try and imply... Wooden uh, planks here, which is not fun, because... Gonna have to, it's gonna have to eat into the the window a little bit that we that we made there. Okay, and like another one over here. I don't want them to be even and straight. That's boring. That is boring. We want nice wonky planks. All right. We want to really wonkify these planks of wood. Okay. In fact, this one here is that is straight. That is boring and straight. Um, okay. All right, that's a bit better. Now, let me just imply sort of the underside of that plank a little bit. Up here, we'll add some more. There we go, like, like that. Oh, no, 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 we don't want the, the spray paint. Uh, so just to catch you up with what I'm doing, if you've only just joined us, guys, we are working on a big, well, the uh, a big panel as part of a um, a double page spread here. Well, not a double page spread, but I work on two pages at a time. It kind of helps contextualize me and, and keep me sort of, I don't know, it, it just helps for referencing what I've drawn uh, before and after to have two pages at a time. I feel like it makes me a little bit faster as well because I don't get too caught up on one page. But um, I've been animating all week, so I haven't actually touched this for a couple of days now. Uh, but yeah, we've got the, the Siberian's land, and there's an earthquake, and basically the local girl says, you know, she doesn't like them. She kind of blames them maybe for causing some deaths, but she kind of wants their help to help carry the, the dead back uh, for a burial. Cut to later that night, it's all going to be dark after the burial. The sheriff is looking for the owners of the Buxom starship, and the Siberians are hiding out basically. Uh, with these fish ladies uh, in her shell dog turd shaped house and um, Kilgar's eating all the food. Kilgar doesn't like hiding. It's not his it's not his style um, So he's happy basically as long as there's food and that's kind of how they're keeping him Keeping him uh, put for now All right, so I just apply another another wooden plank there and then a great big wooden plank there. Okay, and that'll be the top of the door. We won't draw anything behind the neck because I figure there's going to be a bunch of junk and stuff in there. So I'm just going to kind of imply some uh, wood grain and stuff for the door here. Uh, sort of a little bit fussy detail, but it's going to help just to imply that this is wood and not porcelain or rubber chicken material or uh, made out of old, retired 2009 YouTube animators. 
which is a very uh, it's, it's a rare commodity nowadays, okay? So it's a really rare lumber. All right. So let's just put that in there like that, okay. All right, okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, and the hinges would be on the other side. We don't need to draw hinges uh, because this is the handle side. So to draw hinges would be unhinged. All right, anything in the chat that I can get to? Guys, if you um, if I, if you ask a question and I repeatedly don't see it, that's fine. You can send a tip through the Streamlabs link <laughs> or or I'll see if I can. I just, I'm looking at all the comments and I, I don't know. It looks like hard work right now. Hello, King N641994. Uh, sup, Harry, I'm Rick Dumdum. Hey, Rick Dumdum. Hello, Zach Dozier, Dozier. Um, and uh, Joel Mayer. Hey, Joel. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you for uh, coming by, Joel. Don't chastise me for drawing sexy women, Joel. I know you. I know it offends you. It offends your sensibilities. I promise. These are uh, these are pious young women. All right. So we've got the door in there. I think that looks pretty good. Um, this is going to be a lot of wood grain, unfortunately, because there's all the stuff on the floor. Maybe this, maybe the floor is not wood grain, because that is going to be it's overkill, I think, um, for now. So we'll just sort of maybe imply just like the, the shape of the floor and uh, put something back here, sort of the base of the shell, like they've they flattened it out. I don't know if they've put floorboards down. Um, and something over here behind the uh, behind the ladies cooking. So I'm um, gonna do the table now. Table does need to be wood grain because we've got a table down here. We've shown all the wood grain and stuff. So I'll tell you what. I was going to actually get rid of the jellyfish. I feel like the jellyfish looks kind of, I don't know, messy, random. It's supposed to be a jellyfish on a little, um, like a little half clamshell. I don't know. Do we get rid of the jellyfish? It doesn't matter. It really does it. Who cares? <laughs> Who cares if the jellyfish stays or not? But it's going to follow the wood grain of the table. King N64 says, um, Rick Dum Dum, excuse me, says, question, who made those Starbarians figures? Those look really fantastic. Those were made by Joe Amaro, who is a toy maker and toy designer in Texas. Uh, they're just prototypes, basically. Uh, we did look, whoa, what happened to the pen? That's not good. Um, we had to, uh, make prototypes before they would ever see a factory run. And, uh, the quotes from the factories were reasonable, I think but not in my price range, okay? Basically, you're looking at uh, the cost of maybe a nice car or something to make a run of a thousand figures each. A very nice car, and that was not something that I was willing to, to go for. Maybe in the future. No, well, that, fuck that. Definitely in the future is something I'll do. But uh, right now, um, it's a little bit still, you know, um, what's the word? Uh... It's a little bit prohibitive in terms of cost. So, like many things, uh, it's the reason Starbarians 4 hasn't happened yet. It's probably you're looking at about 100 grand. Um, I can't really think of any animation out there, you know, a 10 minute animation that looks like uh, Starbarians 4 would look, being costing less than, so, so to say, 100 grand, which is not to say that um, you need 100 grand to make a cartoon like that. I, I made, I've made cartoons essentially for no money. On my own uh, before but in terms of time you have to generate labor uh, equivalent to 100 grand so if you don't have 100 grand uh, and why would you to spend on a cartoon um, you have to generate labor kind of equivalent to 100 grand which is if one person is working you're looking at maybe two three years non-stop work how do you fund that work um, so I have a patreon but I spent a lot of last year doing other things Doing a Dr. B's animatic, making Ghost Bleed, making 
some animatic for Starbarians that I haven't animated yet. So this year, hopefully, is going to be a bit different and a little bit more productive. Hoping the comic will help on that front. All right, so the wood grain on the table is looking a bit... It's looking a bit sorry. Can I kind of spice it up a little bit? Something like that. I feel like there's a lot of long lines and no kind of short little chips and things. Uh, coloring definitely will help on this. It helps separate it all. I don't know if you guys have ever seen a Jeff Darrow comic. Jeff Darrow is a, a, a fantastic comic book artist. He did Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot and Hard Boiled and, and lots of stuff like that. And um, I remember the first time I picked up Big Guy and Rusty the Boy Robot. It was an uncolored black and white version of the book. And it was like an insane a level of detail but it was completely black and white and I just couldn't make out anything and I felt it's almost tragic that this amazing art you couldn't make out any of the details because it's uh it was all black and white and then later that day actually I found a color version of the comic and I bought it because I'm like oh great I didn't know he did it's weird he did a, co a color one and a black and white one and it was uh the black and white one was fantastic and sorry the color one was fantastic you could make everything out so color sometimes is uh extremely necessary for kind of figuring out what on earth you're uh, you're looking at in a, in a comic book or any piece of art. So I'm, I'm definitely at the point where I can't not think about color and rely on color, especially when there's not a ton of rendering or shading. You just lose, you lose all of those details. Terranium says there's a problem with his eyes, it makes reading black and white comics difficult. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I don't think it's for everyone, and I, I don't intend to keep this black and white, as you know. I've shared some black and white preview pages, but um, not, uh, you know, they're, they're just previews. It's just, I kind of blob in the black and white shading uh, just as a piece of fun, really, to give people an idea of what it could look like, but they will be colored eventually. Okay, I'm happy enough with the um, with the table for now. I want to add in another knot. I like a nice, nice big knot in the wood. Why am I not erasing? Where's the... <laughs> okay. Oh, I've like worked on several layers here by accident. Uh, let's do it here. Okay, here we go. All right. Big old knot in the wood. Okay, there's going to be like speech bubbles dotted around all basically all through the um, background there. All right, so um, the picture that is up here, this is implied to be the upstairs. So I figure I'm going to sort of have to throw a little bit of that in there. Just gently kind of imply there's some furniture or something up here. Like that. And da -da. and I kind of figure that they're not, are they going to have drawers? They're fish people. Wouldn't even be square. <laughs> I'm just thinking, okay, it's going to be very, very soft. Like a nice soft kind of. There we go. Like that, all right. And put a couple of, I don't know, little charge keys or something up there. Might make that. Little fish books, some sort of fish book that they're reading. Um, and then All right, it's a bit fiddly and messy. Just gonna put a shadow there because the light is supposed to be coming from below. I know I've not implied any shading yet with this um, shot, but uh, maybe I don't need to put the shadow there right away. It kind of pulls the eye a little bit too much. But yeah, just some little kind of tchotchkes up there, up in the in the in the rafters. 
And a great big net that's going across the ceiling too, which is going to be on this layer here. Let's do that now. Um, like that. Okay. I figure that they have a um, like a hammock type thing, a big hammock hanging across the top of the shell, kind of becomes their bed upstairs. Um, and we'll just erase the top of that and transfer that down. Okay, so gonna work on uh, windows here. There's basically, I figure that there's some kind of some kind of windows that are sort of etched into the shell. Let me show you actually here. They're sort of poked through the shell. And these these little things here, they're supposed to be like sand dollars. You know, sand dollars are those kind of, um, I don't know really what they are. They're not shells, I don't think, but they're basically made of sand. And they're kind of uh, discs with um, little slits through them, almost like you've cut like a cross section of a uh, cucumber or something with little pips uh, removed. And basically those are the windows, I figure. They're kind of things that are thin that might let a little light through. Otherwise, you've got the, the, the holes, the little pip shapes. It's a very lazy kind of bit of world building, but um, that's the tough thing. When you're designing, you know, an alien location, you have to, obviously you have to think about stuff there is, I was talking to Joyce about this earlier, how there's, uh, you know, important world building and then there's confusing world building. And I'll give you an example of what I actually mean. Um, these lines are a bit thick. Can I go with a thinner line? Yeah, so the, I don't need anybody to look at the windows in this location. All they need to see is that there's some kind of, you know, there's something to let light in. And I think it works that they're kind of an unusual shape. They're rounded. God knows how they poked holes through a shell. Maybe, the, you know, there was sort of some deformity in the shell or they just drilled it out or something. I don't know. Um, and they're going to have um, little, little sand dollars sort of poked through. So we'll just draw these, kind of imply these little pips basically like uh, stars, kind of little star shaped. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't matter. That, no, I don't need anybody to look at the windows in this scene. So it kind of, the shape is, is unimportant, but I'll show you an example here of something else. Okay, so if you look at the if you look at uh, this frame here, there was, I was thinking, okay, so they're sort of primitive people. They live on the planet, lots of sea life and they're fish people, but I really want to imply uh, or remind the audience that they were in a relationship, these two. So I kind of wanted a picture of them together. And I thought, okay, so maybe instead of a photo, it could be like a clamshell. They've opened up a clamshell and there's a painting of uh, this woman and her husband with the child inside the clamshell. And I tried to draw something that looked primitive, almost like um, kind of like a cave painting or like a very stylized piece of tribal art. And it wasn't communicating that the characters were who they were supposed to be. And it just looked weird, like a shell with like a weird primitive painting in it. It didn't look like the characters. I could maybe color code them. Like she's gonna be orange. He's probably gonna be orange or blue. I could color code it in a way that's really clear. It's the characters it was supposed to be. But I got lazy and thought, look, it's it's risky that people won't know um, that that's supposed to be those two characters with the baby. So I'm just literally gonna make a photo frame out of driftwood and draw them in it and have his, his broken, uh, uh, shell medallion like draped over it because you see you see when it, you can't really make it out here but basically the husband yeah it, i didn't draw it there because uh, it's so far away but her husband has half of the pendant she has half of the other pendant so i got lazy with the world building and just literally put a photo of them there i figured that somebody visited at one point visited their planet with a camera and they got a photograph or something because uh I, I didn't want it to be unclear so sometimes you have to just sort of give up on the clever world building stuff and just think Fuck it, just have a, put a photograph in there. Just have them, let them have a camera for a day. It doesn't break the reality. 
they have a they have a, a landing platform for spaceships on their planet so they, they have some technology they're just poor i guess all right so these shapes i'm just going to kind of imply i don't know how exactly just some some wavy kind of marbling inside the shell that sort of follows the the shell upwards because it's spiraling up i guess if the stairs are cascading down that way the shell would sort of be leaning up and twirling up almost like uh it's like um kind of like an ice cream swirl or something or a, a dog poop all right <laughs> djs5590 says lazy world lazy world building designs fish people windows i know but it's you have to do so much you have to do so, you got to do something or else it doesn't make any sense i couldn't just have them living in red brick houses because they're supposed to be fish people but you it's more that you have to sacrifice uh sometimes ingenuity for clarity and you just pick the, the battles that you don't sacrifice that ingenuity for so i thought the windows it's not clever i don't have any idea how they drilled giant holes into these giant shells you'd need like a real tough piece of machinery to do that but all right um yeah i don't want this looks weird this kind of looks distracting this big line so i'm just gonna eat into that a little bit and again just imply another one of these windows behind kilgar um i have my reference let me open my reference folder up here i have a reference with pictures of sand dollars and i don't think i don't think i drew the sand dollars very realistically let's take a look at them um let me see hello davi 88 hey jesse labrie hello jesse Hey Magma Muncha, I already said hello to you, but looks like you got a question. You said the fish women and their interesting anatomy raise too many questions that aren't appropriate for the Christian Minecraft server. You're right! You keep it very, very prudish on my Christian Minecraft server. You're right, I mean they're 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 um I use Bref, by the way, for reference. It's a pretty good free bit of software you can get. Don't need to make an account or any of that bullshit, you just download it. I'll uh open up Skalash, which is the planet we're on. Here's my, whoa, here's my reference for Skalash and sand dollars. Yes, that is a sand dollar. So I drew it totally wrong. You see what it, it sort of looks like a dry cracker with little pip shaped holes in it um, and a kind of a starfish imprint. So yes, BREF is pretty good, pretty good free software for referencing. And I'm keeping it minimized on the other window here because we want to make sure you can see the chat. All right. Alright, so I, I I haven't really obeyed the shape that the sand dollar holes take, but it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna draw the starfish shape in the middle. I feel like that's just a bit too much work. A bit too much work for me, okay? I don't I don't like doing work. Alright, we're gonna draw some fish fishing related junk. We are going to draw a bucket. And I'm thinking about an interesting fish bucket would be a shell. So let's try and draw a shell, actually. Uh, like that, kind of. Shells, I'm getting better at drawing shells but I'm still wretched at it. Something like that, maybe. Just looks like a wrinkly old condom. Uh, and then we'll just draw a few little nobbles on it. Shells tend to have these little spiky bits. Well, some of them do, some of them don't. Obviously, they're all, they're all different. That's the wonder of shells. And to make it look like a bucket and not a, sp a spiky textured condom, which it definitely does look like. I'm gonna put a, uh, this is the thing that's gonna send it over the edge, okay? It's gonna make it very bucket-esque. I'm putting a handle on it, folks. I finally got a handle on things. Uh, does it look like a handle? 
Oh, it looks so much like a condom. It's the tip. It's the tip. Ah, oh, it doesn't look like a bucket. It doesn't read bucket. We Just getting angry with it. Getting angry with it. Alright. Okay. Um, so that's that. I don't, it doesn't look like a bucket at all. Um, I'll tell you what. Add like a little bit of seaweed or something. That's not... The, okay, we have to make sure it looks like seaweed. Because with that weird spiky condom, just having ooze dripping out of the, of the net is not going to be a good look. So make sure it looks seaweedy. And um, what else could it? What else could they have in there? They could have, they could have a great big, a great big shell. <laughs> Just all I can think of is shells. Uh, I tell you what, maybe they have. I was gonna draw a fish skull, but uh, why would they have that? Let's draw a big old shell, how about that? It's just junk basically in the rafters in a net to keep it looking like these people live here and it's lived in. Just some other junk. Just, just shapes and stuff. And um alright. All right, whatever. That's it's all. It's all going to be <laughs> very shadowy when we add the shading. I hope. Uh, and some stuff by the door. I'm thinking. I'm thinking we draw a fishing rod here. Maybe it could just be a walking or climbing stick. Hey, Harry Ashfield. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Davi88 says, I guess you did not watch Velma. No, I didn't watch Velma. It looked crap. Uh, but also, I I don't watch a whole lot of stuff because I am a, uh, I'm a busy person. Um, I'm always trying to get stuff done. So I don't watch a whole lot of TV unless it is wife approved. We watch wife approved t TV and movies in this house. <laughs> um... Harry, did you see Iron Liz's Lightbringer? Yes, that Lightbringer comic. It looks awesome. Check out. I did see something about Iron Liz doing a Lightbringer comic without without express permission by, by Linkara. But I think Linkara, didn't he disown the Lightbringer character or something? I guess that's why that's why it's fair game. I could, I could do an animated Lightbringer spin-off in that case, which would be which would be wild. Yeah, I saw something about it, but I've not actually seen the artwork from the comic. Is it, is it good art? Hmm. I'm trying to just draw a little hook thing here on the fishing rod. So it looks like it's coming out of her back. I don't like that. It's um, that looks like she's she's a, a part she's part crane. Um, what can I do? It's because it's, it's too big. It looks like it's in the foreground basically because I've drawn it. Like no fishing rod would be that thick and fat. All right, so we're we're abandoning that fishing rod because it looks way too way too big. try to make it not look like it's part of our characters here and I guess maybe it's a fishing rod or a broom or something just had too much detail it looked I think too uh, too strongly connected to the foreground hello Bowser how you doing Bowser we're uh, we're drawing very boring background elements today um, there's nothing, nothing I've drawn so far that's interesting or exciting, but it's all necessary, I think, for the, 
for the scene and making it work well. Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's do a little bit of hatching there, just in the side of the windows, so they match the other ones. If you're uh, only just joining us, uh, I should say that I have been busy all week, uh, but we have barely progressed on this page since you saw me last. Um, it's uh, it's because I've been animating, been doing animation, so I've not been able to really work on the comic so much this week. But uh, getting plenty of progress done on animation, and I, I won't jinx it, but I think there'll be something to see before too very long. And I should probably update patrons about it soon. I'll tell you what, actually, we need to put some some ports in or something on this on this uh, area here because it's weird that it just is supported by nothing. And I don't like that. I don't like it. Um, so basically, there are little shelves here that just stick out of the side of the shell. It's a shell shelf. Maybe we could, yeah, do it like that the grain going this way and I don't think we need another one that's fine basically the comic page is cut off um, probably around here so all right Terranium said got an animated series pilot ready to put together but computer won't let me what you're working on a pilot? 3 a.m. Dragon said, Harry, would you... I don't know what you mean, 3 a.m. Dragon. Something about time travel. Bowser is making a commission sheet. Congrats, man. That's a uh, man. Sorry about that. I don't know why I selectively had an accent there for one word. Congrats on making the commission sheet. That's a big step, man. I hope it goes well. Hey, Big Texas Tony. Uh, big Texas Tony says, I'm a busy person. I am a busy person. Don't mock me for my my busyness using my own clumsy f way of framing myself and trying to explain that I don't have time for anything I'm very busy all right oh I don't know I don't know I don't know why can't draw a hook. There we go. It still looks like she's turned into a crane and it's coming out of her back. I don't like that, but uh, I think with coloring, it'll save it basically. Um, let's delete that. And yeah, I, I deleted my hook. Great. Man, this, this thing has given me some jip. I'm getting angry about the way that this hook is being rendered. Okay, little thing like that. And then... <laughs> oh, it's too fat. It's a fat hook. All right. I'm not even going to look at it zoomed out. That's. I know that's fine. I know that will be fine. It still looks like it's coming out of her butt, but that's okay. Um, that's supposed to be, so I'm going to put the stairs in here. That's supposed to be a stair, but it's, it looks like it's about three inches lower than the other one. Uh, so not really not so hot on that one but um whatever davi 88 says draw a spear instead that's a good idea i should have drawn a spear a spear is a very necessary thing for fishing Hey, we got a super chat uh, through the, the tip link. Guys, thank you. Thank you very much. This is from your interesting. Um, I don't know who that is in the chat. If that's somebody 
who I've not addressed yet or said hello to, please give me a reminder. But you are interesting, donated $10 and said, Hi Harry, hope production on the comic is progressing smoothly. It's looking very pretty. Well, thank you very much, you're interesting. How incredibly generous of you. I appreciate your generosity uh, greatly. And I uh, happen to think that you're uh, very good looking. And probably, probably smell great. Uh, can, I, can I draw a spear? I'll draw a spear with the tip starting down there. Appreciate the support. You're interesting. You've you have given me uh, you've given me inspiration to uh, to keep working and not just to uh, decompose live on air. Have to tie this way, wouldn't it? It would be like that. All right, that's good. So now it looks like it's tied to the other thing and it makes no sense, but <sighs> whatever. I hate drawing. Just be so easy if, if it was just if I could just only draw stuff I was good at drawing <laughs> I'd have a very small very selective range of things I would draw but the problem with animation and comics is that you're trying to if you're in, involved in fantasy or even if you're not is that you're always drawing the world you're always putting things in the world even if you're telling a completely uh, realistic drama type story about you know whatever um people having going dating or whatever in, in a big city you still have to draw the stuff in the city you have to draw coffee shops and cars and you know post boxes and stuff if you're drawing a fantasy nonsense uh barbarian story set on a fish planet you have to draw something resembling the fish planet and uh i'm not very good at abstractions and this looks like a it looks like a weird bookshelf basically I've drawn I'm not very good at abstractions and shorthands I tend to have to actually draw all the details to feel like I have a handle on what anything looks like and uh, I'm, I'm jealous of people that can just imply sort of details and stuff with uh... all right that's good enough for the stairs whatever kind of looks like stairs right you figure you could get up there and access stuff that's kept up in the rafters so yeah that's my uh that's my curse i i'm not very good with um shorthanding details so the floor back here the floor is uh it's causing me sleepless nights what the fudge is going on what the frick what the fucking frick is going on with the floor because it starts here i feel like it should be more like back there and then come around there yeah okay so these women the women cooking the food back there are really scrunched up in the corner but um i don't know you probably wouldn't have an open fire too inside a room like that but yeah you know it's hard it's hard to do it all and get everything right all the time it's easy just to make it all bad <laughs> um uh hey bean light bean light and sam gay uh, did I say hello to you, Sam Gay? I'm sorry if I didn't. Sam Gay says, this looks fishy. Nyuk, nyuk, nyuk. A harpoon is a good call, 3am dragon. I think I've covered that base, basically, by drawing a spear. Um, Terranium says, so many artists complain about doing inking and shading. Well, it's the opposite for me. I can't stand sketching. I hate it all. Um, Anthony, Anthony Tolwinski says, just yesterday. Yesterday. I found the entire 94 Spider-Man animated series. Oh, you know what? Hey, Anthony, Anthony, um, if you like Spider-Man the animated series, you might like something that I'm working on at the moment, which I won't... That's a world exclusive. Nobody knows anything about that, but you'll see something soon from me uh, if you play it lucky. I liked that cartoon a lot. That was my... I didn't really watch it much as a kid. It was only ever on... I only ever caught it kind of incidentally, but whenever I did, it felt like a big deal. And then finally, when I was old enough, I bought it on DVD. 
uh, 3am dragon says were you enchanted by avatar 2 the way of water i have not seen avatar 2 the way of water i didn't particularly care for the first avatar uh it was fine i liked the avatar gift shop at disney world but i didn't, don't, <laughs> I didn't go on any of the rides i went to the gift shop and i liked seeing all the toy spears and stuff that was cool so yeah, I have not seen Avatar The Way of Water. These fish people have nothing to do with that. Uh, they were originally going to be pig people, like Hogstrong. And then I thought, wait, they live on a planet with all the all these like... Basically, I wanted them to live on an islandy planet. And I thought it would make more sense for them to look like fish if they were on a fish island planet. Yeah, uh, it has nothing to do with, with Avatar The Way of Water. But um, I've not seen it, so... Not to say that I'm original or anything. Uh, and don't, you know, don't take inspiration from things. Um, let me see. Can we sort of... I feel like if he's got like some sort of little seat there... Maybe her seat just starts there. How about that? Because I kind of... I want something for her to sit on there. So I don't think we are going to have time for all the shading today. Essentially, what I want to do for this uh, frame, uh, this panel here, is what we've done for this one down here. I have not put the background in there. I've just I was going to draw the stairs and stuff again, and I just thought it was overkill. I'll just do a nice big abstract colored background, and I just put the cooking pot in, and one of the girls just to imply, you know, the background behind them. But um, here, because this is the first time we see the interior of this space. I thought it was important that we actually see it with some detail. I'm going to draw a little bit of seaweed there, hanging out. Hanging out. Hanging out with the family. Having ourselves a party. Just another little bit of seaweed. I like, I like drawing the seaweed. It's very fun. It's very rewarding to draw the seaweed. Let me just, just put that in. And let's just draw another little bit of seaweed, because I'm having such fun with that. Let's make it more snaky and animated. Yeah, just, just something to kind of make it look like there's stuff hanging around up there. You know, I'm having so much fun with the damn seaweed. Let's draw a little bit more. Okay, this is uh, this is Harry's holiday. This is Harry's drawing fun squiggly line holiday. And that's it. We're just going to just... Oh, do I draw any more? I just... Just leave it. Leave it, Harry. Leave it. You're having too much fun with that. All right. So lines, lines, and lines. We'll just draw another couple of lines up here. All right, so I've decided we are going to put floorboards in, which is exciting. Um, I know you're all looking forward to floorboards. No characters, no anatomy, no facial expressions, no action. Just just uh, uh, wood grain and seaweed and, um, and sand dollars. That's what we've drawn today. 3AM Dragon says, Pig Island sounds cool thematically. Yeah, but Hogstrong comes from a piggy island planet. That was part of it too. I, I thought to myself like, oh, you know, actually, I, I kind of want to do something with Hogstrong coming from a little island. So if I have another pig island, eh, it worked thematically because I wanted them to, I wanted him to feel some, some connection to these people. But um, I can't remember now why I changed it to fish people. I just, I, I don't know, I just did. Davy, Davy Kirkham says, been tuning into these since they started. Really adore the John Higgins-esque approach to coloring. You're going for, is that a joke? Because I haven't done any coloring. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who John Higgins is. So if that's a joke, I'm sorry, I don't get it. But thank you, Davy. Um, Harry Ashfield says, Harriet, loving the streams. Any, any chance of another random drawing fun request stream at some point? Yes. Yes, I will do that for you, Harry Ashfield, this week but I may make it so that people do have to tip for me to draw. Because right now I've got so much work on my plate. It's uh, it's really piling up high. So I'd love to take time out and do a stream like that, but I might make it so that they gotta use the tip link. 
and uh, and throw. It can be like whatever. It can be two dollars, but just something for for me to do the drawing. So yeah, I'll do that this week. Hello, Florian Laura. Hello, Fun Cubes. Who would you say is your artistic inspiration? Asks Davy88. Uh, Davy88 wants to know artistic inspirations. I like a lot of people, man. It's too many, too many to name. I like, as you see, like Jack Kirby. I like Will Eisner. I like Katsuhiro Otomo. I like Akira Toriyama. I like Matt Groening. <laughs> you know, I was like, I can just go on and on. I know Matt Groening being mentioned in the same breath, breath, breaths, breath as those other guys seems a bit strange, but you know, inspired me, you know? Loved Life in Hell and The Simpsons growing up. Um, just too many, too many to mention. You know, one thing that I, I definitely spent a lot of time absorbing as a kid, and yet I can't tell you many of the names of the people that worked on it, I spent a lot of time reading British uh, kids comics when I was growing up. So Beano, Dandy, that kind of thing. And yet, I really, I don't think I can name any Beano or Dandy artists. Uh, and one of them died recently, and I'm sure I've spent hours absorbing his work, but um, that's a bit shameful, really. I should probably do something about that. I don't feel like it inspires me much nowadays so that's probably why i haven't learned these people's names i don't sort of go back to it a lot but as a kid as a kid i loved the beano and i loved the dandy so yeah i was I'm not gonna have floorboards on the uh on the floor but um i just think it gives some perspective to the scene because other than that it would be just what some kind of pebbles or um sort of muddy like dried up mud or something for the ground or rock don't really want that um maybe the floorboards would be cut into around the fireplace around the the rocks almost like they've got a little pit or something so let's let's do that before i go any further figure that that's just cooking away there on the on the ground I don't think you'd start a fire on top of floorboards that's I would because I'm an idiot but I don't think they would all right everybody I am coming up to uh about an hour of the stream just under and um unfortunately I'm probably not going to stay much longer than an hour today because uh, I do have to go and have dinner with my wife, Joyce. But, uh, <laughs> um, I didn't quite finish them. <laughs> Maybe another live stream. We'll just, I'll, I'll try and do all the shading on a different stream, uh, on a, on a, you know, separately offline. And then I'll come back and we'll just leave some tiny little dot to finish. Because I would like to finish this on stream. That'd be nice. Before I go, I'll, I'll shade a few little areas and I'll just show you the kind of thing I mean for the shading. It's just, it's something that I find with the shading. The reason I don't want to do it on stream, I thought maybe I'd have the guts today, but we don't have enough time so that I'd end up rushing it. Um, I find I constantly second guess it. Just a simple little thing like, um, see, I don't like some of this shading, but a simple little thing, like this area like Hogstrong's face, trying to imply that light was hitting his face, causing shading around here. I did hatching from two different angles, which I don't like doing. It took me just forever and, and on Kilgar's arms here I was trying you know does it shade like that or does it is it solid black and then it fades you know back to light I was trying all these different techniques it takes me so long um graphic using kind of graphic black and white to imply a sort of um like a soft light or a progression of light to dark is not anything that I'm used to doing so it's uh it, it just takes a lot of trial and error f for me I think I'll get better at it but um, yeah. Funcube says, I'm excited for the cartoon. I have a weird wish. It would be cool if all the fish ladies had a carp mustache drawn. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not going to happen, Funcubes. Hello, Ma Azad. 
Uh, Sam Gay says, would you perhaps work on a Trilby Dogtooth comic sometime in the future? Yes, I will. Uh, if I finish this comic, I guarantee at some point there will be a Trilby Dogtooth comic. Probably using the gigantic Trilby Dogtooth script that I've got lying around that otherwise isn't doing anything. I would like it to be a movie, but is it likely to be anytime super soon? Not really. Because uh, I don't have a million dollars to waste and not do anything with. I don't have a million dollars. But uh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely I would like to do a Trilby Dogtooth comic, a Dr. B's comic. But this is not, you know, I don't want this to be the be-all end-all of, uh, of what I do. I still want to make animation and a lot of it. So... Yeah, it should be an interesting year. Uh, one thing's for sure, guys. I'm not going to stop drawing anytime soon. My bugging pen hand, my pen hand, my right hand, is burning uh, lately. I don't I don't think it's RSI or anything. I don't think it's anything to, to be worried about. But uh, it's just, I've just been drawing non, non-stop. I've been animating the 25 seconds of key poses this week, which might not sound a lot, but I think it's, it's pretty ambitious what I got done. And uh, actually, it was just this weekend. I did it from fr Friday, Saturday, and a little bit today. And got two pages um, inked and roughed out too this week. Uh, I've been listening to this really long Jack Kirby uh, documentary while working, and I was I was sickened to hear that when he was in his 60s, he went back. He worked at DC for a bit, and he went back to work at Marvel. And in his 60s, he was contractually obligated to do 15 pages a week. A week! Now, granted, I'm not doing, um... I'm not, I'm not doing, um... Uh, just pencils. I'm doing, uh, pencils and inks. But, it, you know, it took, it would kill me to do four pages, uh, inked. I could maybe do eight pages, uh, of pencils a week. Eight or nine. Maybe ten. But he was a man in his 60s. I'm not, you know, I'm in my 30s and I cannot believe that he did that. Just incredible, incredible energy for an older older gentleman um, in his 60s. A very prolific uh, artist, just in general, fantastic artist, great creator, great storyteller. But if you, can, if you can imagine doing 15 pages a week, every single week in your 60s, um, it's, it's outrageous that they had him do that. And he did it, you know, he, he fulfilled his contract. He, uh, he didn't let up. And then he went to go and work at Hanna-Barbera and Ruby Spears, which I've, I've heard was better for him and he enjoyed it more and got paid more. So I'm glad about that, but uh, I can't, I'm probably gonna talk about that on another stream. I can't get it, I can't get it out of my mind. I just, contractual obligation to do 15 pages a week um, with, uh, in, your, in your 60s. Zach says, damn, I know some manga cast do 19 a week, but that's with a team of assistants. So yeah, he wasn't inking these, remember? They were still pencils, but no assistants that I know of. Um, very few people could really draw exactly like Jack Kirby. Um, and if there, there's very little footage, unfortunately, of him drawing, I would like to see him draw. But from what I hear, he didn't really sketch things out. He kind of just put pen to pencil and it just flowed out. And I know some people don't love his stuff. It's a bit of... Uh, you know, it's a bit of a specialist taste, but I love it, and I just, I can't believe he could do 15 pages a week of, of even in his, you know, youth, and even in his 20s. Um, yeah, that's crazy. All right, so uh, basically, I'm going to wrap this up. Yeah, we didn't finish, but we got, I've pretty much done all of the, um, let's just put a few more wiggly worms, a few more wiggly lines in there, to imply uh, wiggle, to imply wiggliness. Um, so yeah, that's that's I think all the detail of the uh, of the panel is is in there now. That's all we kind of need to do. So the rest of the effort of the of the page, um, the panel, but in, indeed the whole page because it's just you know one uh, panel left, um, is is shading basically. So I'm not going to try to go crazy because it's already you know it's a busy looking two pages. There's a lot going on. I I have this problem where I can't can't seem to separate you know I, I sort of I want everything to be filled with detail and I, I have trouble leaving black space 
a negative space, which is a shame because it can actually be really effective and look really great. So I have to really consciously make sure I, I include more negative space going forward. But the sort of thing I'm talking about is, for example, this is a candle in the middle of the table and we're going to want, you know, they don't have many light sources in there. They've got the, the fire going with the cooking pot. And they've got the candle. And other than that, they're a pretty primitive people without many light sources. So, so I'm guessing I will have, you know, around Hogstrong's sort of back, uh, the side not facing the nearest light source, there will be there'll be shadow but then again i hate doing this stuff it's really tough to because th this sort of gets into the realm of you're doing lighting but you're doing it with just black and white also it's materials so you have to you know chrome a shadow chrome wouldn't really have a soft shadow like that that all looks like shadow that you'd have on i don't know armor made out of clay or something but <sighs> It's tough because with chrome, you probably have an area like that maybe of shadow where it's sort of there is a dark There's a dark sort of Streak in the middle It doesn't look too bad But then you know it's sort of because it would catch light from over here too. It would catch light from all over the place Yeah, so it looks cooler with it more with, with more of it sort of eaten into but that's just to give you an idea of how how hard it is for me to do um, shading. Because I have to really think about how the materials would kind of catch the light. Um, how much of it. And I can, again, I can overdo it. I can put in way too much. And it just looks messy and looks busy. And I'll be honest, I don't like some of this stuff. It is too busy. I don't like that there's hatching going that way and hatching going that way on Hogstrong, but you know, it, there's, um, there's like a speed. You have to, you can't just be an artist that takes 10 years to do one page or 10 years to do one cartoon, which is almost something I've done before. Uh, unfortunately, you got to just be happy at some point with whatever you can get done in the time you can get it done in. And basically this whole comic project is, um, it doesn't become, it's no longer viable unless I can do something like five, six pages a week, I think, on our, you know, on, on the routine, so on the regular. So, you know, it's just to give you an idea, the shading there on Hogstrung, it's fine, but I don't love it. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will. See, I'll probably have to change it off stream. This is why uh, I don't think I can do the shading on stream. I can do the, sort of lay out the, the details like that, but coming in and, and doing all of this stuff it's just it's trial and error and it's honestly it's embarrassing like it, it's it feels kind of vulnerable because it's um i have to show that there are like very real limits to what i can draw and my art and um i can only do you know i can only do so much i'm a cartoon capable artist but i'm not good at a lot of kind of realistic rendering realistic anatomy i have to do a lot of trial and error a lot of reference so and that's okay if you're an artist and you feel like your stuff isn't great i say this a lot so it's a little routine and a little cliche by now but i will say it is better to have imperfect work that you finish and go that's finished great now i move on than to have great great work that you either take forever to finish or you can't bear to finish it because there's some imperfection somewhere so you go oh whatever i, I tried you know making a 10 page comic and I did two pages that were perfect and took a year and I can't bear to finish the rest. Honestly, better to just put those two pages out there and call it a two page story that doesn't have an ending. Um, you should try to finish your work as best as you possibly can. But if it's looking like it's giving you trouble and you go, my skills are not there yet, just just accept it, you know? it's It sucks, but 
I wish there's so many things I've abandoned. Uh, not so much in my old age, but when I was like a teenager and when I was in my 20s, I abandoned because I wasn't good enough yet. And now I wish I could look at them. And it'd be kind of funny, you know, to see sort of like slightly more primitive work from my early years. It'd be it would sort of, I don't know, it's, um, it's nice to sort of see where you've come from, even if you've only really progressed a little bit. So yeah, my advice, just let your work be flawed. Do your best, but let it be flawed. Don't worry too much. That's what I have to do. <laughs> I have to let it be flawed. But I don't want to let it be flawed on stream. That's where it's really embarrassing. It's like I want to I want to show off and, and look capable on stream. And I can't do that, damn it. Because of the fucking shading. Alright, alright. I'll just finish the... Cr See, the chrome is okay. I don't mind doing the chromey stuff too much. Because it's sort of just, just nonsense, really. Chrome just reflects the room around it. But... Um... You know, like we're gonna have to put in some sh tog strong shadows, like a shadow back there, which kind of be nice. Maybe there's a shadow there on the floor. Maybe she has a shadow. So that'll be that'll be some nice stuff um, to put in there. I might. I'm thinking about kind of implying, you know, shadow up here, sort of in the in the rafters of the space, maybe in the corners. That's that's a lot. It's gonna be a lot of work to do all that. Um, I'll try and just sort of get the characters looking right and then go in go in with that stuff and do it sort of broadly so there's not too uh, too much that I have to kind of too many details I have to fuss with there um, all right everyone yes yeah, see I want to tease hogstrong's hair but it's been an hour I should probably leave it at that no we did not manage to finish this page but uh, we'll finish it another time hey Sven Holgerson um, thank you very much for being here Everybody, not just Sven Holgerson. I'm not singling Sven out to thank him in particular, but um, I can still do that. Hey, Sabola Hat, you joined us a little bit late. I'm pretty much wrapping things up. Uh, so yeah, everyone. Um, hey, Novel, thank you for, for saying I'm a, I'm a great artist. I, I, hey man, I try my best and you got to try your best, but um, it is it is tough, man. As uh, You want things to be perfect. Everyone does. And uh, it's funny when people say, hey, hey, don't be such a perfectionist. Sometimes I want to grab them and say, you have not seen me being a perfectionist. If I was being a perfectionist, it'd take me 30 years to, to, to draw like an eyebrow. Um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot that I settle with, I guess. I settle for. Um, anyway, anyway, hopefully, uh, hopefully that, that ending sort of message is helpful to you all. Um, and hopefully you enjoyed the stream. Thank you to our, uh, Tippa, you're interesting for donating 10 bucks. Appreciate it. Um, and yeah, Bowser, if you do a doodle stream, will you accept OCs? If I have reference, my friend, if I have reference, but don't send it to me now because I'm going to, going to go flop out downstairs and I think I got a tuna, a tuna sandwich to eat. So, um, yeah, it's just, you know, sex, drugs and rock and roll for me, for my, my artist lifestyle. It's uh, it's coffee with my dad. Um, come home, stream for an hour, uh, rant and ramble and draw some wood grain and then go and eat a cheese sandwich, tuna sandwich, excuse me. All right, everybody, you have a great evening. Isaac Thompson, you joined us a bit late, I think. I don't know if I said hello to you yet, but uh, Sabola Hat, Davy 88, Bowser the Bun, Jesse Labrie, Emmanuel Acor, um, who else we got? We got we got Davi, we got Novel, Geranium, Sven. I'm sorry, I'm doubling up on the names, but I'm just trying to get everyone. Fun Cubes, Zach Ma Azad, uh, who asked what program this is. It's Clip Studio Paint, by the way. Sam Gay, Axma, just Axma. Um, thank you, everybody. If I didn't say your name, um, Harry Ashfield, 3AM Dragon. If I didn't say your name, uh, it's because of my uh laziness uh, unwillingness to keep scrolling up special fish simon aya of amri um all right everyone you have a good evening um i'm just gonna go now and uh talk to you soon djs 5590 bye bye